You say Fudo versus Callan Kessler is an interesting duel. The way it plays out, ultimately, Callan was about to win and steal Yusei's soul. However, Yusei crashes right before the final blow can be struck, and the duel ends without a definitive winner. So ultimately, Yusei gets to keep his soul for another day. Well, just about anyway. Look at the size of that shrapnel sticking out of him. Oh my god, I did not see that in the dub. Oh my god! Oh man! Is it bad? What heightens these stakes further though is that long ago, Yusei used to look up to Kalin as a leader and mentor. However, over time, Kalin would grow cruel. His actions eventually found him being sent to prison, which would be where he would ultimately meet his end. Due to mistreatment from guards, and from starvation. He would curse the one that he believed put him there. How could you? Huh? You say, you snitch! How could you sell out your best friend like this? <laughs> and of course, because this is anime, at the moment of his death, he is reborn as a dark signer, able to exact his revenge. But hold on, before we jump into the duel, let's talk about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. You thought dark signers were what you say was afraid of? Wrong. It was actually the Dark Elves. Raid is a game with a huge PvE and PvP community. For those that want to battle it out and see who comes out on top. Available on both PC and mobile, the game boasts an incredible lineup of over 600 champions to choose from. And a chunk of these champions are elves. These elves come in a variety of flavors to choose from. My personal favorite has to be the Dark Elves. And if I had to pick one in particular, probably Visix. She just looks really cool. You gotta love the look of these guys, they look pretty awesome. For me personally, my favourite aspect of Raid has to be beefing up all my characters and then going all the way back to the start of the campaign, where on my first run I kinda struggled to just get one star, however now with my powered up team I can decimate all of my enemies and get that sweet three star completion. If you haven't tried Raid, now is definitely the time, as there are loads of special events every day, more new champions being added, and a brand new guardian ring that gives you loads of new ways to use your champions. If you want a head start, all you have to do is click the link in the description or the QR code up here, and if you're new, you will get an epic hero Chinoro, along with 200k silver, an XP boost, an energy refill, and even an ancient shard for you to summon with. You will find your extra rewards up here in your inbox. Today, I want to find out if one, had that attack been successful, did you say really have no more options left? Was he really about to lose the duel? Better yet, did anybody have any opportunities to win earlier in the duel? So we wouldn't even have to have got to that situation. Spoilers, yes, somebody did. And finally three, if you crash your D wheel in the middle of a turbo duel, shouldn't that count as a loss? Or is it fair for the duel to be made void? We'll talk about that a little bit later. The duel begins and, hang on, it's a turbo duel. For those that don't know, a turbo duel is identical to a regular duel, except for two unique things. One, duels take place on D wheels, meaning maneuverability is a big part of the duel. As if you can outmaneuver an opponent's attack, you can buy yourself precious extra seconds to think of a response and react accordingly with your spells or traps. The second unique thing is the field spell Speed World is active in both players' field zones at the start of the duel. What does this do? Well, for the rest of the duel, during each player's standby phase, both players will receive one speed counter to place on their own Speed World field spell. You can have a maximum of 12 counters. When a player takes damage, you remove one of those speed counters for each multiple of 1,000 damage they took from a single attack. So the question then becomes, what are these speed counters used for? Well, you see, in turbo duels, players can't actually use spell cards. Instead, they have to use speed spell cards. If we look at Yusei's turbo deck, not a single normal spell in sight. The way that speed spells differ is that they have a speed counter requirement to be activated. For example, speed spell final attack requires eight speed counters to be activated. Or another example, speed spell spell power baton, that needs six counters to be activated. And pretty much with all of that, you now know everything there is to know about turbo duels. So, let's jump into the duel. 
The duel begins, and since Khalid has a slight lead, he goes first. His opening hand consists of Depth Amulet, two Infernity Archfiends, Dark Tune and Nightmare Hand, Infernity Guardian, and Infernity Beast. He summons Infernity Beast to the field, sets his trap Depth Amulet face down, and ends his turn. It's Yusei's turn, and his hand consists of Scrap Iron Scarecrow, Shard of Hope, Rockstone Warrior, Hyper Synchron, Speed Warrior, and Speed Spell Final Attack. Yusei's standby phase occurs, and now the field spell Speed World activates. Both players' speed counters increase to level 1. Yusei summons his Speed Warrior to the field, and immediately enters his battle phase, attacking Infinity Beast. As he does, the effect of Speed Warrior kicks in, doubling its attack until the end of the battle phase. Before the attack is successful, however, Kalin activates his face down Depth Amulet which, at the cost of one card in his hand, will make it so that the attack is negated. However, after three turns, Depth Amulet will be destroyed. Kalin discards his Infinity Archfiend to negate the attack. And now, with no more options, Yusei sets his Scrap Iron Scarecrow and Shard of Hope face down, and ends his turn. We're going to come back to this turn at the end, because by changing one little thing, it might have drastically altered the rest of the duel. It's back to Kalin and he draws Damage Translation. The standby phase occurs and both players' speed counters increase to two. Kalin summons his Infernity Archfiend and then immediately moves into his battle phase. He attacks first with Infernity Beast. This destroys Speed Warrior. Yusei takes 700 damage. Note that this attack causes Yusei to crash into the side of the walls, instigating the series of events that will lead to Yusei's duel runner, breaking down. Infinity Archfiend then attempts to attack directly. However, Yusei uses his face down Scrap Iron Scarecrow, which negates one attack and is then set back face down to be used again on another turn. The attack is negated, so Kalin moves into his main phase two, sets damage translation face down, and ends his turn. It's Yusei's turn and he draws Junk Synchron. The standby phase occurs, and both players' speed counters increase to 3. Yusei summons his Junk Synchron, whose effect activates upon its normal summon. It allows him to special summon one level 2 or lower monster from his grave. He brings back Speed Warrior, and now with a level 3 tuner and a level 2 non-tuner, Yusei tunes them together to Synchro summon his Junk Warrior. Now Yusei activates his face down Shard of Hope. If Yusei inflicts battle damage, he can draw one card. If that card drawn is a trap, then that trap card can be activated immediately by destroying Shard of Hope. However, if it's anything else or the trap can't be activated, then it goes to the grave. Yusei knows that Kalin has Death Amulet on the field. However, the cost of losing a card in your hand is a hefty price to pay in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because hand advantage is really important. And that is absolutely true. 99% of the time. However, in this case, it is the 1%, as Kalin's archetype, Infernity, revolves around having no cards in their hand, as that is how they get their effects. Yusei declares his attack, and Kalin happily discards a card. The attack is negated, and Yusei ends his turn. It's back to Kalin, and he draws Infernity Dwarf. I know it shows him drawing the Dark Tuner here. In fact, the sub actually shows the same as well. However, we see it in his opening hand at the beginning of the duel. So either he draws Infinity Dwarf here or he draws his Dark Tuner. It doesn't really matter because it doesn't change the duel at all, but I just thought I'd mention it anyway. Animation error at the end of the day. The standby phase occurs and both players' speed counters increase to four. Kalin begins by sacrificing his Infinity Beast and Infinity Archfiend to summon Dark Tuner Nightmare Hand, whose effect allows it to special summon one level two monster Monster from his hand. He special summons Infinity Dwarf. Now, with a level 10 Dark Tuner and a level 2 Non Tuner, Kalin is able to Dark Synchro Summon a level 8 Dark Synchro Monster. Fun fact for those that don't know, Synchro Summoning you add to Synchro Summon, whereas Dark Synchro Summoning you subtract to Synchro Summon. Kalin summons 100 Eyed Dragon. Due to its super beefy anime effect, it gains the effect of all dark monsters in Kalin's grave. Also, when it is destroyed, Kalin can add any card from his deck to his hand. So the question becomes, what can 100 Eyed Dragon do? Well, a lot of things. Currently, there are five different dark monsters in Kalin's grave. 
However, Infernity Archfiend and Dark Tune and Nightmare Hand's effects are pretty much unusable. However, the same can't be said about the rest. Infernity Guardian gives it the ability to not be destroyed by battle. Infernity Beast gives it the ability that opponents cannot activate spell or trap cards when it declares an attack until after the damage step. And Infernity Dwarf imbues it with the ability to inflict piercing battle damage. Kalin attacks with 100-eyed dragon, targeting Junk Warrior. However, Yusei activates Scrap Iron Scarecrow to negate the attack. Unfortunately, since 100 Eyes Dragon has the effect of Infinity Beast and Kalin has no cards in his hand, Yusei cannot activate spells or traps until the end of the damage step. 100 Eyes Dragon destroys Junk Warrior, dealing damage to Yusei. Kalin ends his turn. It's back to Yusei and he draws Synchro Destructor. The standby phase occurs and both players get 5 counters on Speed World. Yusei summons Rockstone Warrior into defense. He sets his trap, Synchro Destruction, face down and ends his turn. As he does so, the effect of Death Amulet ends since 3 turns have passed. It is destroyed and the turn ends. It's Kalin's turn and he draws Speed Spell Power Baton. The standby phase occurs and both players get 6 counters on Speed World. This is perfect for Kalin as now with 6 counters he is able to activate his Speed Spell Power Baton as it requires 6 or more speed counters to be activated. Now he can send one monster card from his deck to the graveyard to increase the attack of one monster on his side of the field by that monster's attack points. However, by doing this, he cannot draw during his next draw phase. Which as we all know, is not a big deal for him. He sends Infernity Destroyer to the grave, increasing 100 Eyed Dragon's attack to 5300. And not only that, but since a new dark monster has entered the grave, it also gains its effect. Whenever this card destroys a monster by battle, it inflicts an additional 800 effect damage. 100 Eyed Dragon attacks Rockstone Warrior. When the absorbed effect of Infinity Dwarf attempts to occur, allowing Kalin to inflict piercing battle damage, Yusei reveals Rockstone Warrior's effect that it negates any battle damage from battles involving it. However next, Destroyer's effect kicks in. Since a monster was destroyed, Yusei receives 800 damage. Yusei's Dual Runner is thrown into the flame walls and although he is able to escape, his bike receives critical damage. From this point onward, Yusei is running on borrowed time. As Kalin ends his battle phase, 100 Eyes Dragon's attack returns to normal. Kalin ends his turn. It's Yusei's turn and he draws Level Warrior. The standby phase occurs and both players get 7 counters on Speed World. Since Kalin controls a monster and Yusei controls none, Yusei is able to special summon his level warrior straight to the field. And not only that, but when it is summoned like this, its level is increased by 1. Yusei then normal summons his Hyper Synchro. Now with a level 4 non-tuner and a level 4 tuner, he is able to synchro summon his ace monster, Stardust Dragon. Stardust receives a boosted attack thanks to Hyper Synchron's effect, who bestows 800 additional attack to a dragon monster it summons. It also grants battle destruction immunity. Now with 3300 attack, Stardust Dragon attacks 100 Eyed Dragon. Although, due to the effect of Infinity Guardian that it had absorbed, it is not destroyed by battle. Now, since Stardust Dragon inflicted battle damage, the effect of Shard of Hope finally kicks in, four turns after it was originally activated. Yusei draws a card from the top of his deck. The card drawn is the Trap Miracle Locus. Yusei sees the threat of victory in his mind, and so moves in for the win. Yusei uses it immediately which makes it so that Stardust Dragon can attack once more. And not only that, but its attack is increased by 1000. The only detriment is that Kalin must draw one card. But as we have learned, that's not a bad thing, as if Kalin has a card in his hand, his infernities lose their abilities. Kalin draws and receives something. This card is never shown and he never plays it, so it doesn't ultimately affect the duel, so it doesn't really matter. Now, since Kalin has a card in his hand, all of the absorbed effects of the infernities in the grave are negated, meaning Stardust successfully destroys 100 Eyed Dragon. His speed counter is reduced by 1. However, this is where Kalin reveals his final trick. The final effect of 100 Eyes Dragon kicks in, allowing him to add any card from his deck to his hand. The card he adds is his true ace monster. Although this seems bad, Yusei had planned for this. He activates his face down Synchro Destructor. That's effect makes it so that if a Synchro monster is destroyed, then the owner will be inflicted damage equal to half of that monster's attack twice. If this is successful, you say will win the duel. But Kalin quickly plays his trap 
damage translation, which halves all effect damage this turn. Now, instead of dealing 1,500 damage twice, it instead deals 750 damage twice leaving Kalin with 900 life points left. Yusei thinks to himself that the final card in his hand, Speed Spell Final Attack, will be able to win in the duel next turn, since it will double the attack of Stardust Dragon. So, Yusei ends his turn. However, as he does, the final effect of Damage Translation kicks in, letting Kalin special summon one Ghost Token for each time he took Effect Damage this turn. Since he took Effect Damage twice, he summons two tokens. Stardust's attack returns to normal, and the turn ends. It's Kalin's turn and the final turn of the duel. Kalin is unable to draw due to the negative effects of Speed Spell Power Baton. The standby phase occurs and Kalin's speed counter increases to 7 while Yusei's goes up to 8. Kalin tributes both his ghost tokens in order to tribute summon Earthbound Immortal Kapakapu. This monster's effect is that as long as there is a field spell on the field, which in this case is Speed World, it can attack your opponent directly, it cannot be attacked by opponent's monsters, it is unaffected by opponent's spells and traps, and if it destroys a monster by battle, it inflicts damage to your opponent equal to the destroyed monster's attack. Now, with Yusei's life points sitting at a mere 1800, Kalin uses Kabak Apu to attack directly. Yusei's Stardust and Scrap Iron Scarecrow are rendered useless. And just as the attack is about to make contact, Yusei's Dual Runner breaks down. Yusei is thrown from the bike and knocked unconscious. And not only that, but a piece of shrapnel impales his abdomen. Now unconscious, dying, and without a working Dual Runner, the duel is cancelled with no result. The shadows don't take anyone's soul, and Kalin rides off into the distance, as Yusei is rushed to a hospital. A very bleak end to an awesome duel. So then, I know what you all want to hear about. Let's go back to Yusei's first turn. The more superior play would have been to summon his Rockstone Warrior to the field instead of his Speed Warrior. Why? Because Rockstone Warrior has a permanent 1800 attack and an amazing effect. You see, if Rockstone Warrior is in the grave in the anime, you can banish it to special summon another of itself from the deck. However, believe it or not, we won't need that effect with this play, because now with Rockstone Warrior on the field, we can attack into Kalin's Infinity Beast. Kalin will of course activate his Depth Amulet and discard his Infinity Guardian, just like he did before. When he goes back to Kalin, he will draw and he will summon his Infinity Archfiend to the field. Archfiend will attempt to crash into Rockstone Warrior, but Yusei will use his Scrap Iron Scarecrow to stop this. Since Kalin's Infinity Beast is too weak, he won't be able to attack over it, and so will have to end his turn. It's back to Yusei, and now he can summon his Speed Warrior. He will double its attack and then use both monsters to attack. It doesn't really matter which ones we go for, as Kalin will discard two cards from his hand to negate both of the attacks. These will be his Infinity Archfiend and his Dark Tuner. Now Kalin will have no cards left in his hand. I know I said that Kalin with an empty hand was a bad thing before. However, this time what we have done is we've got rid of everything a little bit too fast. And now he has basically nothing for the rest of this duel. Now it will be Kalin's turn and he will draw Infinity Dwarf. Most likely he'll summon Dwarf to the field in defense position. As Kalin knows when he attacks with his Archfiend again, you say will negate it. However, when Beast attacks Speed Warrior, it will be destroyed, and you say will take some damage. However, now it's back to you say. You say will summon his Junk Synchron, special summon Speed Warrior back from the grave, and make Junk Warrior. Now, with no cards in Kalin's hand, we can attack and destroy Infinity Beast. It will be Kalin's next turn, and he will draw Speed Spell Power Baton. Now, you'd think Kalin drawing Power Baton would be a bad thing. However, because we destroyed Infinity Beast, that means he's not protected from our spells and traps. So, if he uses this card on Infinity Archfiend, making it 2800 attack, when he attacks, we can negate the attack, and his attack will go back down to normal, and we can just keep on blasting him. Now, on Yusei's next turn, we can switch all of our monsters to attack, destroy all of the field that he has, and then whenever we want to, we can summon Stardust Dragon out with Hyper Synchron. By tuning it with our Rockstone Warrior, it'll have a hefty amount of attack, and will do some hefty damage. Yes, it will be banished during the next standby phase, but that that's not too bad because we could just banish our Rockstone Warrior in the graveyard to get another monster back to the field. So basically, the moral of the story is Kalin can't make a comeback here, and Yusei would have won by simply summoning Rockstone Warrior 
instead of Speed Warrior. One more thing we want to discuss. If someone crashes their bike in the middle of a turbo duel, should it be made void or should it count as a loss? It's a difficult one to answer. I asked a bunch of you on YouTube and this was your responses. It was quite split. And then I asked you all on Twitter. It was still pretty split. And then when I said, if someone purposely caused that though, should they get the loss instead? And you all agreed that they probably should. However, two big things to point out. One, ultimately, turbo duels are about a duelist driving skill. So avoiding attacks and being skillful on a bike is a part of the duel. However, saying that, Yusei did receive the damage from attacks from Kalin. So in a way, you could say it's sabotage. As somebody did point out on Twitter, Team Catastrophe used a similar sort of technique where they were using a duel spirit to hook opponents' D-wheels so that they would crash and that's how they won. And ultimately, they got disqualified for that. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that one. We've established that Yusei could have won this duel. I'll let you guys decide in the final verdict of whether crashing your dual runner in this situation should result in a loss or it just shouldn't count. Guys, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, let me know in the comment section below and also let me know any other duels you would like me to cover. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Catch you later. Bye, everyone.